You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey folks, welcome back. We're continuing our coverage here at CES Live yes. 2014 in Las Vegas, Nevada, baby. Is that where I am? I'm beginning to lose track, John. That you are. That, my friends, is Renee Ritchie. That's John P. That's right. And that is Pioneer Ted. How are you doing, guys? I think that should be your name. That Well, in some circles it is. It is. It is. But, you know, we've got Ted Pioneer here for Ted. Pioneer. And good to see you again. It is great to be seen. We like good to, to see you guys. <laughs> we like to get the updates from Pioneer each year. And he year. brought a friend. I did. He did. What's his name? This is uh, the top model of our new Nex products. And uh, Nex actually stands for the Networked Entertainment Experience. Um, but obviously it's a play on words. This is the next step um, in in-dash entertainment for your car. Uh, and it's, as I mentioned, it's five models. But what's really cool about it is this would replace the existing radio in your car. And the big buzzword, as we all know today and, and throughout the show, will be the connected car. There's so many people here talking about connected car. And what we're bringing is five new products that really give kind of the best of both worlds. Um, you know, we've talked in the past at length about our app radio products, and the app radio was significant because it was the first product to let the phone do all the work and really not put much in the dash. This product um, actually gives you the best of both, so it augments the, the content that's in the dash with the phone connection. Um, well, tell us about that. So what do, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, let's say Pandora, for example. That's a popular one. Uh, so, so how does that work? All, all the normal stuff that you would expect, and that's really how the consumer's expectation has changed. The consumer expects the car radio to work with Pandora. Yeah, why stuff they, on the car. Absolutely. Why wouldn't it? Didn't it yeah. always? Didn't it always. That's that's <laughs> one of the funniest things that we get a lot is, you know, oh, I, I just assumed it had Pandora. I assumed it had satellite radio. Um, what we're using the, the network connection of the phone to do is, now when you assume it's already got navigation, we're bringing in traffic information through the cloud, through the phone, to enhance the navigation. Um, we can bring weather information in, again, from the cloud, through the phone, to enhance the experience. Things that the consumer wouldn't necessarily expect their in-dash car radio to do. So let me, I'm sorry, so let me just make sure I have that clear. You, you would have a navigation app mm -hmm. built into the unit in the dash, so it's doing the heavy lifting on the computation Correct. and all yep. that. But it might say, you know what, I, I know where the roads are, I just need to know what the congestion level is on them, and it will only pull a small stream of data rather than all the mapping data and all that other crap. Exactly, exactly. Okay. If you drive through, and another example is a lot of people drive coast to coast, you know, summer vacation, drive time, you know, you may not have network connectivity. So we've got 7.9 million points of interest, we've got full 50 states, uh, including Alaska and Hawaii. Built so that when you it. drive to Hawaii, uh, so when you, you can. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. you know how long it'll take <laughs> because <laughs> you got right the traffic yeah. information. <laughs> um, but you know, beyond that, so it really does, you know, kind of bridge the gap between the cloud and the car itself. Um, so it gives you all of those, you know, really great features um, right built into the radio. But of course, yeah, as you mentioned, Pandora, we've got Pandora built in, we've got Sirius XM built in, HD radio built in, um, and it's a completely new interface on how you control it. It's much faster. As you can see, we're now pulling in things like channel art and album artwork right from Sirius XM. This is the first product to do that. So you're getting that graphical artwork that really enriches the consumer's experience in the car. It makes it glanceable, which is important in cars. Absolutely. Because you don't have a lot of time to sit there. I don't want you driving, John, and then looking down and trying to read what you're doing. Um, uh. it's, it's a much faster product. We've actually got a multi-core processor. We've got a gigabyte of RAM. Um, it's got onboard storage. This is closer to a smartphone or a tablet than any car stereo in ever dash has tablet. been. Basically. So um, when you with, said connected, though, when you said connected to my iPhone or my, uh, my smartphone, what does that mean? Is that a traditional Bluetooth connection? You know, it, it's everything. So we have Bluetooth for uh, calling, we have Bluetooth for audio streaming, so if you just want to hop in the car from the gym where you were Bluetooth streaming to a headset or something like that, you can hop in and you continue your listening. In addition to that, of course, you can plug in, you can get the Pandora off of the phone, you can get HD radio, um, you can get uh, iHeartRadio, all of our app radio apps, you can get all of that content running on the phone, 
but control it into the dash. When you say just plug in, you mean with like a, 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 a micro USB or a lightning cable or whatever? As, as you know, our goal is to pretty much cover all the bases. Yeah. You know, Pioneer wants to be the leader in the connected cars, so we can connect to, uh, we've got dual USBs, we can connect to an iPhone using a lightning connector, we can connect to an older iPhone with a 30 pin dock connector, we can connect to Android handsets using USB, micro USB, MHL, um, we can connect to even external device. If you want to bring in a game system, like your last conversation, uh -huh. um, we've got an HDMI input on this, so you can bring that in, I'm and the kids now. can play games in the back seat. <laughs> the thing I love about this is I bought a Toyota the year before they got smart. Yeah. I went to Toyota and I said, "What? can I put the new one in here? And they said, no. I am stuck with a non-smart system forever. Unless but you're I, not. Exactly, unless I go to Pioneer. And last but not least, we added in a, a feature from a company called iDatalink, and it works with their Maestro module, which lets this radio for the first time talk to your Toyota car. Uh, and so really? a lot of that information that you could display on your Toyota radio, which prohibited you from putting an aftermarket radio in, now we have the ability through this module so we can send information to any sub displays that are in the car and the really? car can send information to this so you can see things like tire pressure, you can see things like you know vehicle status information that would normally display on your Toyota radio, now we can display here. How many cars can you do that? I mean, generally speaking, how many are the, supported with the, that? The, the company, um, ADS, which, which is the, the company that does the iDatalink and the Maestro, they have a, a, a uh, a limited number of vehicles, obviously it's the newer vehicles yeah. with the bus systems, but what's great about them is they're working on new vehicles every day, and their entire module is internet based. So as new nice. vehicles become available, the retailer simply plugs the module into the internet, downloads the latest vehicle data, and they're ready to go. Is that something that you could do, like if you, I mean I guess once you have the right module in your car, you probably don't really need to update it very often, if at all, but um, is it something that uh, an end user could update themselves? Or um, th usually just a dealer installed kind of update? Usually it's a dealer installed thing, and, but what is nice about it is because the, the module is not necessarily vehicle specific, only the software, if you have a 2009 Toyota and you go out and buy a 2014 oh. Toyota, Take it you out. don't have to yep. buy, buy a new module. Nice. Um, they can just reflash it with the latest software and, and you're ready to go. And the nice thing is because I know how to use my phone, I don't have to learn something new, I know how to use my in car system, I don't have to learn a new one, I can just have the familiar things with me right where I want them. And and what's really great, you know, it's a great segue. I, I, I you know, we the way our app You're radio like a system professional works, or something. We, no, we pre-planned this carefully, <laughs> but no. <laughs> you know, at, at, the way our app radio works and, and we've talked a lot about that at length is our app radio, our, our strategy is to the consumer knows how to use the apps that are on their phone. They're familiar with the interface, but rather than use it on the small screen of the phone yeah. and try and hold it while you drive or put it on the seat, we put all of that information up on this touch screen. So you don't have to relearn your Waze interface. You don't have to yeah. relearn your iHeartRadio interface, uh, your Pandora interface. If you know how to use that on your phone or your tablet, in your home or on the go, you know how to use it on your Pioneer car stereo. So when I borrow your car, I don't have to worry about learning someone else's phone. Right. I can just use my phone. <laughs> That's right. We just have to put Pioneers in all of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Then it's like ubiquitous. We right? can help you with that. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, any other big uh, big new things we should take a look at with it? No, you know, uh, the biggest news, as I said, is is really this product, you know, answers every I wish it did that question yeah. that we've heard in the last several years, whether it's the album art coming in from a variety of sources, whether it's connectivity to a wide range of smartphones, whether it's you know getting that cloud-based content to enhance what's already on the device, this really is the, the next step um, of in-dash entertainment, so. All right, give us the exact model number of this one. So this one is the AVIC 8000 NEX, NEX. Um, there's actually five products and they range anywhere from $700 all the way up to $1,400, which is this bad boy with a capacitive uh -huh. touchscreen. Um, and they'll be available in March uh, and uh, at retail. And for $1,400, what all does it include? Like, I mean, uh, does it include the, the the ability to integrate with my with my? How, how much time you got? So <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll start. It's a seven inch uh, capacitive LCD touchscreen with a motorized face, so multiple angles. Of course, it plays DVDs. It's got an SD card slot for media playback. It's got dual USBs, dual camera inputs. So you can have a rear camera and a front facing. Those are built facing. in. The camera well, the, inputs. The camera inputs are built in. Okay, you, you but obviously you, have to yeah, add yeah, the cameras. If you, yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, Sirius XM connectivity, that again, you buy the Sirius XM the tuner, receiver, but you yeah. get all the, the connectivity. HD radio is built in, the HDMI input is built in, um, RDS TMC traffic, 7.9 million 
points of interest for the navigation. Navigation's built in. Um, three sets of uh, high volt pre-outs, uh, 13 band graphic EQ, auto EQ, auto time alignment. It's all um, included. Everything's in, built in. The it's, only uh, thing that I have to pay extra for is if I want to add cameras, I pay for the camera. If I want to yep. add satellite, I pay for the satellite receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, other than that, it's it's in there. The, you know, the, the iData link we talked about, that's a module that lets it yep. talk to your car. That's a, an additional fee, yep. but the connectivity is built in. Um, okay. And then of course, we've got our app radio mode, which would work with your iPhones to run apps, your Android phones. The Obviously, the, the specific cables for the iPhones or the specific Android phone. phones, those, those cables are going to be extra just because we don't want you to pay for all the cables that you need. Um, but really, that's, that's everything that's in the box. Salivating. Oh, <laughs> the, the one question from Papa LRG, I might have missed this, but GPS updates, how do those get in the system? Great question. So the, this product actually features what's called the latest map guarantee. Um, and so map updates, when you buy this product, if it's been sitting on the shelf and there's been a map update since then, um, when you connect to our AVIC Sync app, which is what really connects it to the cloud, you will get the latest map um, when you first install For this what, product. like a year? Um, well, it's, uh, it's uh, the, when you it's first, first install it. First okay. install it. What about if I want to upgrade next year? And then subsequent map updates, those would come at a cost, but you should be able to, you know, obviously we haven't finalized that detail at this time, but um, because we have the ability to deliver maps over the air through the, the, the smartphone connection, we'll be able to uh, stream updates onto the device um, next year when those map updates become available. So it's HD ready, not HD integrated, or is HD radio built into it? On five of the models, right? So four of the five models have an HD radio tuner built in. Okay. Um, one of the products does not. Okay. Uh, and then there was one other question mm -hmm. about the, is it only for Toyota? No, th no. that's. Th th that was me. First of all, <laughs> it's a standard double DIN Correct. size. So it'll go in any vehicle that has a, a double height opening, yeah. and then the additional module that ties into the car may or may not be available for your car. Where could they look up to see, where, is there a library where they can see if their car is specifically going to tie into this? They, they can of course visit pioneerelectronics.com yep. um, forward slash car. Um, also they can search for iDataLink, that's all one word, iDataLink. I um, that'll lead them to their website where they can see if their the library. Ford, Toyota, Honda, Chrysler, Volkswagen vehicle is compatible with this system. Cool. Awesome. All right. Boy, we love we love to hammer you with all the details, <laughs> but you always know all the answers. So that's when, why we do it. You know, it's packed full and, and I'll forget <laughs> How everything. How many liquid crystals are in that display, sir? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ted. We appreciate it. Thanks, Great. Ted. Thanks for the hey, time, guys. guys. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys tuning in for all of our live coverage here at CES 2014. I'm John P. I'm Renee Ritchie. And we'll be back with more soon. Right back.